this is practice quiz two, part two. I left on in question seven in part one. I'm going to continue on from question eight. Complete the table shown and determine whether the table shows a linear relationship. So I'm trying to figure out if this table will give me something with a line. And remember, something like here has a line or makes a line. Looking at my table, um, normally I would have x and y. In this case, um, instead of y, I have um, something that would equal y. This doesn't look like an equation, but it actually is. Um, the equation would be 5.75 plus x plus x plus x is 3x. And I am dividing that by 4. So that is my equation. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the missing values in this table are. So I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator for that. I'm going to put my equation in y equals. My equation is 5.75 plus, and I'm going to put that 3x divided by 4 in parentheses because that is a fraction. I'm going to go to second graph because I want to look at that table and I'm trying to see what is x, what is y when x is 3. And when x is 3, I should have 8 on the other side. Now I'm trying to find the missing values over here. What is x when y is 17 and what is x when y is 20? So I'm going to go ahead and look at my table for that. I'm trying to see what is x when y is 17, and if I scroll all the way down, when x is 15, y is 17. When x is 19, the y is 20. So the missing values are 8, 15, and 19. And right away I can see a is wrong because the first number should be 8, not 7. So a is wrong. B has 8. 15 and 20, which are the numbers I need. And over here, if I click graph, I see that my graph is aligned, so this is a linear relationship. This does show a linear function, so the answer is B. Number 9. A water bottle contains 8 ounces of water, however, the water is leaking out of the water bottle at a rate of 1 half ounce per hour. In this situation, B the volume in ounces of water in the bottle is a function of t, the time, and hours. Determine the maximum value for the range. So we're looking at a water bottle that contains 8 ounces of water. Water is leaking out at a rate of 1 half ounce per hour. That is our slope. Our slope is 1 half, and uh, remember slope always goes in front of x, so I'm going to say 1 half x. In this situation, V, the volume analysis of water in the bottle, is a function of T. So I'm working with V, which is for volume, and T for time. And I'm looking for the maximum value in the range. Uh, remember, X and Y is the doctor. We're looking at range, we're focusing on the Y. I'm going to start by writing an equation. Um, but first, let's think about this. After one hour, how many ounces of water are in the bottle? Well, I have eight ounces of water. And after one hour, I know that half of an ounce is going to leak out. So after one hour, I have seven and a half ounces of water left in the bottle. How did I get seven and a half? Well, I took eight, which is what I have right now, and I subtracted one half from it. So right away, I can already see that that's my equation. Y equals 8 minus 1 half x. Now, to put it in their terms, um, instead of y, I would have to use v. And instead of x, I would use t for time. I'm looking, I'm focusing on the y, in this case, the y is v, v for volume. And I'm trying to figure out what is the biggest volume that um, that water bottle could have. 
So I know that over time, the uh, volume in that water bottle, the volume would decrease because water's coming out of the water bottle. But I know that at zero hours, I started out with eight ounces of, wa of water in the water bottle. So the highest or the biggest value for the range is actually eight ounces. I'm not gonna go over 12 because 12 is similar to nine. I'm gonna go straight into 11. Tim paints houses. He charges an hourly rate plus a base fee for his services. The table below shows the relationship between H, the number of hours of labor, and C, the total cost of ten services. For those of you that like to use a calculator, this becomes a simple problem of trying to figure out the equation first. I'm going to go to STAT, edit. Um, I already have all my points in here, all my data, but um, one of the things you need to pay attention to is you always want to start with L1 and L2. And if you want to get rid of a number, all you have to do is click delete and delete all the numbers that you want to. When you have your information in stat and edit, you click stat again, you arrow over to calculate. And in this case, I'm not going to assume that I'm looking at a line. I'm just going to click five and assume that I'm looking at a quadratic. Because if it's a line, the calculator will let me know it's a line. In this case, I have um, y equals I have zero x squares. That means I don't have any x squares. That means I can ignore the x squares completely. Um, I have 25 in front of x, so 25 is b. So I, my equation is y equals 25x plus 75. Right here, um, Tim decides to keep his base fee. The base fee in this case would be 75. That's the one time fee. But he is going to increase his hourly rate by $15. The hourly rate in this case happens to be $15. Remember that rate um, for slope is say slope is rate of change. And in this case, um, the slope is an hourly rate. The slope always goes in front of X. Um, we're trying to increase this by $15. So if I increase that by $15, 25 plus 15 is going to give me 40. I don't do anything to the 75. It doesn't say to change the fee. So my equation is y equals 40x plus 75. And I'm trying to find the total cost for 8 hours. So if I plug in 8 for x, if I put that in my calculator, 40 times 8, Plus 75, no, minus 7, plus 75, I end up with 395. So the answer is $395. Okay, so now you have um, almost all of the questions for practice quiz to work out for you.